Now, 20 seconds. In the market for iPhone 8 in Andorra, there are 5,000 customers whose reservation price is 200, 3,000 customers whose reservation price is 500, and 2,000 whose reservation price is 800. If you are the unique iPhone seller in Andorra and your cost function is 1 million euros, what are your profits uh, if you act rationally? Okay, this is a beautiful question. I hope uh, you like it. There are only three, um, three um, logical prices to set by me, okay? If I said uh, there are, uh, they are uh, 200, 500, and 800. If I charge a price over 800, for example, 1,000 euros, no one would buy me the the iPhone. So that has no sense. Okay, I would lose my fixed cost. If I charge a price between 500 and 800, for example, 600. Only this type of uh, consumers, these 2,000 customers, would uh, buy the iPhone. So, if these 2,000 customers are the unique that will buy me the iPhone, why, why, why didn't I choose uh, the price 800? Okay, they also will pay 800 to to me. So this is uh, what I'm doing here is. Uh, First degree discrimination to each of these uh, to each of these customers, you know, and it's like uh, practicing first degree discrimination, but well, you could say say in short scale. Okay, so three possible logical prices. If I charge two hundred, all of them will buy it. So five thousand, three thousand, two thousand, ten thousand consumers will buy the iPhone. So 200 the price, 10,000 iPhones sold is 2 million minus 1 million, so 1 million profit. If I sell it at uh, 500, um, well, it would be bought by the two type of customers, customers that are uh, most willing to pay, yeah? 3,000 that would pay 500 and 2,000 that would pay 800. So 5,000 iPhones, so iPhone iPhones, sorry, <laughs> sold at a uh, price of 500, so 2 million 500,000, so uh, minus 1 million, so this profit, okay? And if I set such a high price to uh, iPhone, only the 2,000 customers uh, with a high valuation uh, would, uh, would buy the iPhone, so my profits would fall to 6 uh, 100,000. So I would choose 500, okay? And the correct one would be this one, okay? Um, the same that I, I, I told you that this is not logical to, to set a price between 500 and 800, it's not logical to set a price between 200 and 500, and so on, okay? I think you, you can easily understand it. 23rd, uh, suppose you have a friend who is a monopolist of a selling good. He sets a unique linear price. Today, you tell him that he could be better off by doing some type of price discrimination. Now, your friend is... Okay. Uh, you have time to, to answer it and... I told you many times that this is one of the tools you should uh, carry with you for your life, you know, for your for your your work of uh, micro. Yeah, the monopoly is not worse off. Okay, if it changes, it's because it's better off, and if the if the new option is not better for it. Just don't change and uh, you will remain the same, okay? So clearly, see, it's very important for me, this type of questions, very, very important. Regarding the first degree price discrimination, 
It is an idealized concept, but it's interesting theoretically. Yes, yes, why not? It's efficient. Yes, I showed you, I think, in the previous video. The monopoly takes all the surplus from the customer, from the consumer. Yeah, of course. Of course. None of the above is false. They are all true. Yes. So, this one, okay? Well, 25th, Fernando, you are the manager of a chemical firm located next to a beautiful beach in Ecuador's Pacific coast, and you produce a very polluting good called XX. You are a monopoly with cost function, this one. And the demand you face is given by P equal to 100 minus Q. If the government imposes a production quota of 10, well, uh, I think we uh, should make the calculations, okay? So, marginal revenue equal to, equal to marginal cost, then 100 minus 2Q, by the trick, equal to 20 plus 2Q, then 80, yeah, equal to 4Q, with 2Q to the right hand side, so Q equal to 20. Um, then you would like to sell uh, 20 units of your uh, polluting good. The price, uh, you go with this to the inverse demand, 100 minus 20 is 80, okay? Then your profits, revenues, 80 minus 20 minus the cost is 700, okay? What happens with the import uh, quota, or the production quota, sorry, uh, production quota, we should say here, okay, forget this word, import quota, it should say production quota. What happens with the production quota? Okay, uh, we didn't, we shouldn't need to do this, because, because I I always tell you the same. The monopolist, the monopolist can choose the quantity, can choose the price. So if the monopolist chooses to do this, is because it's the best for it. So if you, as a government, uh, don't allow the monopolist to do what it wants, you are making it worse. Okay. So. Um, Okay, then we don't have. Uh, well, we don't have a clear answer because let's read them. Okay, you will be better off because the price of the good you sell will increase. No, no, maybe you uh, sell uh, more expensive your good, but you sell less. And I told you, I told you, the monopolies chooses this, he could choose producing 10, okay, Fernando could choose producing 10, and if the mathematics tells him that the best is to produce 10, okay, you produce 10, but if this is the best option, any other option is worse, you will be worse off, but the consumers will be better off, of course not, of course not, the consumers are worse off, of course, with the production quota. Um, they buy less and they buy more expensive, yeah? Your profits will de will decrease by 200. It could be, it could be. Uh, your profits will decrease, that's for sure. The debt will loss caused by the monopoly will be reduced to the half. No, it will be higher. So we could uh, answer C, but maybe we uh, do the calculations just in case. And um, yeah, the profits uh, with the import quota the import quarter 10, the price would be to the demand um, 90, then the profits are 500, yeah? Revenues 900, minus cost 500. Before we were 700, now are 500, then um, clearly is C. Okay, you just do, do the, uh, the two possibilities and compare them, okay? Now, 26th, which of the following statements is false? So, which is false, be careful. It makes sense to regulate a monopoly because 
uh, it is make it market failure. Well, it makes sense. It makes sense. Maybe you, you as a government, uh, shouldn't um, subsidize. Uh, sorry, regulate a, a monopoly. But if you consider that that um, in certain in certain um, markets, the mo the monopoly should be regulated with uh, the maximum price or uh, or with a with a subsidy maybe. If a uh, natural monopoly, well, you you could uh, you could do it. Sometimes it makes sense to subsidy a monopoly. Yeah, I've, I've told you, a monopoly always causes a deadly loss. Be careful. That's false. That's false. There exists market uh, where the society is better off with a monopoly. Yes, yes. So this is false. We saw it in the first degree price discrimination. Okay. Then, 27th, a monopoly wins more if it faces an elastic demand. Uh, well, no, it wins more if it faces an inelastic demand, okay, like the cigarette uh, demand, for example, okay, the cigarette market. I mean, we, we talked about it with the natural gas uh, example, yeah, Javier. You are assigned to be monopoly in a new market and you are very excited. Anyway, the market entry costs are very high. But once you enter the market, you will have low operating costs. Moreover, your cost function is this one. 10,000 plus 8Q. The demand you face is Q equal to 20 minus P halves. Then, you will sell for units at a price of 32. It seems you have been offered a natural, monop natural monopoly. I would mark this, okay? Uh, so, so, so huge uh, total cost uh, comparing with the marginal cost or, value, or average variable cost, uh, eight. Uh, you will not produce unless you are subsidized it. Well, uh, we should uh, look at the calculations, okay, to answer to C. But B, I think it's quite uh, clear. So, we do the monopoly uh, exercise. Normally, P is equal to 40 minus 2Q if we isolate uh, P. So, profit maximization condition is marginal revenue 40 minus 4Q equal to marginal cost that is 8. Okay? If we isolate Q, we have 8. Okay? 32 equal to 4Q, Q equal to 8. Then price. Going to the inverse demand is 40 minus 18 uh, minus 16, sorry, is 24. Then um, profits, profits are revenues, 8 times 24 minus the costs. So this uh, negative profit. So it's clear, clear that you will not produce unless you are subsidized. Okay, so I would mark. Uh, in the 28th D, okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, let's make a break, and then we will continue with uh, this exercise. Now, you know you are the manager of the most fashionable disco in Ibiza. Whoa. Since it's located in a breathtaking place nearby the sea, you have market power, you know. Your nightly costs don't depend on how many tickets you sell, because you need to pay so many employees and the drinks you sell are free of your, uh, free for you, sorry, since you have a signed contract with a brand of drink. Um, the nightly demand uh, for tickets, it's quite different for men and for women, okay? Is it worth for you charging different prices for men and women? If so, what would be the difference in profits compared with the option of a unique price for all the people? And how many uh, more tickets would you sell with differentiated prices? Okay, we have to make third degree price discrimination, okay? Uh, the costs are only fixed costs. So marginal cost zero, okay. Then uh, for men, 
we isolate P, okay, uh, it's 200 minus Q, and price range, be careful, is from 0 to 200, and women from 0 to 100, because the inverse demand is 100 minus Q. Profit maximization condition for two markets, so these two markets, well, I don't, I only have one uh, plant where I produce these uh, tickets, yeah, one disco, then marginal revenue is 200 minus 2Q men, marginal revenue for women 100 minus 2Q women, then it's very easy, uh, Q will be 100 for men and we should sell 50 uh, tickets for women, okay? In total, 150 tickets. Well, um, price, we go to the demand, to the inverse demand in 200 minus Q men is 100, 100 minus Q women is uh, 50, okay? So we should practice price discrimination, then um, profits revenues from men 100 times 100 100 tickets at 100 price um, from women 50 tickets at the price 50 my cost well we suppose cost are zero really they are uh, fixed cost we should subtract them but let's leave it like this uh, 125 hundreds I don't know if you say uh, like this in English or 12,500, okay, um, then what would the difference in profits compared with the option of a unique linear price? Oh, we should then uh, make the exercise um, without considering price discrimination, okay, then without price discrimination should find the, the aggregate demand, okay, but be careful, be careful. Marginal cost is zero. Okay, so as it is as it is zero, the um, the optimal condition, uh, this intersection point will be exactly at the Q axis. What does it mean? That the aggregate demand um, comes from the sum of men and women demand. Okay, I've explained to you many times in in class. Okay. Uh, this could be very complicated exercises, but when we have uh, marginal cost equal to zero, okay, uh, this means that uh, the the optimal with, um, point we will find it for low prices. Then for low prices, for low prices uh, have here, for low prices, uh, both type of consumers go to the disco. So we just aggregate them, okay? Uh, not here, we aggregate them here because with some quantities and the uh, aggregate supply would be 300 minus 2p, okay? The other part, the other part for prices over 100, we don't consider it because of the low marginal cost, okay? Uh, this, uh, these situations I show you obviously better uh, personally, when we are in the academy and with the blackboard, and okay, personally, they are explained better, of course. Then, 300 minus 2p is the uh, aggregate demand we consider. Then, p is equal to 300 minus q divided by 2. Then, marginal revenue 300 minus 2q divided by 2 by the trick. Okay, now, marginal revenue equal to marginal cost that is zero. Q equal to 150, okay, uh, then, then, uh, price would be, going here, 300 minus 150 divided by 2 is 75, then, the profit, considering zero fixed costs, are uh, 11,250, then, then, with price discrimination, 150 units in total, 100 to men, 50 to women, and prices 150. So this profit and this profit uh, with uh, without price discrimination. So the difference in profit is 1,250. I think it was okay. Uh, this is a correct answer. 
well, this exercise is easy, maybe uh, too long for a, for a test, yeah, but it should be easy for you if you do it uh, with, uh, with calm at home, yeah. Okay, so if the demand, uh, if the demand a monopoly faces is linear, its margin revenue will be also linear starting at the same point in the q-axis. No, flatter than the demand curve. No, steeper than the demand curve. Yes, constant. Uh, no. Okay, I told you. I told you. Uh, here you have the proof. Here you have the proof. I usually do um, when we meet. Okay. Uh, if P is equal to I'm A minus BQ, total revenues are these, and we differentiate, and, and it's very easy. Okay. Now, the marginal revenue it is cheaper than the demand. Okay. That's where I mark that. Natural monopoly, it is desirable for the society uh, when the cost of producing producing the whole product by one company is lower than if it's produced by several companies. Yes, in fact, uh, that's the definition of natural monopoly, mathematically I mean. Usually emerges when there are very strong increasing returns to scale or economies of scale, that is when the average total cost and marginal cost are decreasing. Yes, that is uh, that is true. Uh, the fixed costs are so 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 big than uh, that. Sorry, the marginal costs uh, are are very very small. Yeah, and average total cost is usually uh, decreasing all the time. It's usually subsidized because if it often loses money. Yes, that's true. So all of the above. I hope you've learned with this question. 32. Regarding a monopsony on the input L, the profit maximization condition is this one. It's a market where there is a unique seller of the input L. Be careful, be careful. Uh, no, it's a buyer of the input value. Okay, the profit maximization condition is okay. I think we should um, look for the profit maximization condition. So, the profits are uh, P, a monopolist, a monopsonist. Sorry, uh, we consider that the the, the output itself uh, it does it in the um, in the um, in the perfect competition, okay. So P constant times the production function minus uh, the wages depending on L because because I'm a monopsonist times L. So if we differentiate it, is P times marginal product of labor, okay. Be careful, minus this differentiated times L plus this times the derivation of L is one. If we uh, isolate P MPL is equal to all these parentheses to the right. So the correct one is A. Okay.